the fastest, simplest method for delicious pasta with vodka sauce at home. In this day and age, we all want great food, but we don't always want to go through the cooking and cleanup time that it requires. This method for cooking pasta alla vodka solves most of those problems. I think you have to chop like two things and then grate some cheese. Everything else is just throwing it in a pot. That being said, this method only works if you did a tiny, tiny bit of work on one component ahead of time. That is Marcella Hazan's three ingredient tomato sauce. We made this in my last video and I'm of the notion that this should always be in your fridge. It opens up a variety of options at dinner time. In case you did miss that video, here's a 10 second recap. Well, now that you understand the requirements, let's make some pasta alla vodka. Three quick ingredient tips. One, I'm using a bronze cut rigatoni. You see how the finish is kind of chalky on the outside? That means the sauce is gonna stick much better. Number two, I'm using whole dried Calabrian chilies. You can just substitute pepper flakes if you want to. And then three, I'm using kind of an untraditional ingredient, and that is going to be rosemary. I love the balance and kind of herbaceousness that it gives the sauce. I like to use rosemary. If you don't want to, feel free to disregard. Remember how I said we need to chop two things up? Let's chop them. First up, grab three Calabrian chilies, slice the tops off, cut them in half, and remove the seeds. Then you can just cut them up into strips. Also, feel free to add more or less depending on your spice preferences, but I like mine spicy. You'll see why at the end of the video. Next, grab a handful of parsley and mince it up. Don't skimp on the parsley. So many pasta recipes I see say to use like a tablespoon of parsley. Frankly, it's just not enough. With all those ingredients prepped, let's head over to the stove. Add 30 grams of salt to around three liters of boiling water to create a 1% solution to flavor our pasta. Now toss in all of that pound of your dried rigatoni and set your timer for 10 minutes. Moving quickly, set up the workstation. All ingredients should be within arm's reach and a large skillet in the center over medium low heat. Pour in Marcella's tomato sauce and let it cook for about a minute. Now add a solid pinch of oregano. Oh my God, that was not supposed to be all that. Now with the appropriate amount of oregano, add in the dried pepper and 120 milliliters of light cream and 50 milliliters of vodka. That's about a shot and a half for anyone using college measurements. Also, don't worry about getting a super high-end vodka. Something like Stoli works just fine. Now stir everything together and we are gonna toss in that whole sprig of rosemary to impart that rosemary flavor. Now you're gonna let that sauce simmer for about 10 minutes. After my timer goes off, I push the pasta off the heat and as you can see, still not cooked through because we are going to finish cooking it in the sauce. This is key. After the sauce has simmered, remove the rosemary sprigs and add in about half of the 50 grams of Parmigiano Reggiano We'll add the other half in a bit. Now you're gonna load up all your rigatoni and start stirring this behemoth together. If you need to add a little starchy pasta water to thicken up the sauce, you can do so. Also add in the rest of the Parmesan. And a very, very important step, don't forget to taste it. I like to do so before adding the parsley so I can get a better judge of the salt levels. Taste it and add salt and pepper as you need. Seriously, don't forget this step. Now toss in all of your parsley. We're gonna mix this to combine and we are about good to go. You're gonna plate this bad boy up high in a bowl and give it a final shower of Parmesan. And that my friends is a fast and delicious pasta with vodka sauce. Literally cannot keep my hands off this pasta dish. Needs one thing.
I can't eat this pasta dish without a glass of milk. I don't know why. It's because it's like a little bit spicy, and then you go to like a little bit of sip of milk, and then right when it's done, you come in with more spicy. Oh, just can't beat it. And I could not stop picking at this pasta while I was plating it up. Seriously, this is easily one of my all-time favorites. It's so easy and delicious. Hopefully this pasta series is teaching you that. You can make delicious restaurant quality pasta in the comfort of your own home. So go make yourself some pasta. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the series. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.